Welcome to Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. I'm Luigi Fontana, uh, professor and scientific director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic and Longevity Program of the University of Sydney. Today, I would like to discuss with you this very interesting paper just published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, this is a study on the effect of colonoscopy screening on the risk of colorectal cancer uh, incidence uh, and rate of death, okay? Now, uh, why is important? First of all, because colon cancer is the second leading cancer for prevalence in Western countries in both men and women. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very important disease in terms of morbidity and mortality. Uh, it's the second only after prostate cancer in men and breast cancer in women, okay? And uh, basically the aim of the study was to understand if uh, colonoscopy screening uh, uh, is really effective in reducing the risk of colorectal cancer and related death, okay? Because basically, even if it used in the clinical practice, we didn't have a large randomized clinical trial to show the efficacy. So to answer the question, these researcher enrolled more than 84,000 men and women presumably healthy, age 55 to 64, um, and they were randomly assigned with a one-to ratio to receive an invitation. That's very important to receive an invitation to undergo a single screening colonoscopy or the control group receive no invitation or screening. So basically the usual care group. So what are the results? The results are that if we use an intention to treat screen analysis, the risk of colorectal cancer after 10 years of follow-up was 0.98% in the people who have been invited to perform the colonoscopy and 1.2% uh, in the usual care group. Basically, there was a significant 8%, 18% risk reduction, okay? However, the risk of death from colorectal cancer was not significant, okay? So if you have followed, you know, on the media, basically there are a lot of articles saying, oh, after all, you know, uh, colonoscopy, is uh, screening is not as effective as we thought, and da, 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 da. but look, let's look, the, let's, let's uh, dive into the study and, and look at the real data. The problem is that, that only 42% of patients uh, 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 that were randomized to colonoscopy completed the test. So they've, they've been invited, but only 42% of patients completed the test. So if we look on only those who really completed the test, basically there was a 31% reduction in colorectal cancer and a 50% decline in mortality. So this is the important message that of course, you know, if you invite people and these people, they don't, sh they, they, they don't show up and they don't do the colonoscopy and then you use the intention to treat analysis, of course, you know, there is a small 18% reduction in colon cancer uh, and uh, a, a, a no reduction in death. But if you look at those who completed the colonoscopy, <clears throat> sorry, the reduction in colorectal cancer is 31% and 
and the, 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 the reduction in mortality for colon cancer is 50%. And I also want to point out that, you know, uh, a colonoscopy is not easy to perform and it depends on the expertise of the gastroenterologist performing the colonoscopy. And now with the uh, artificial intelligence, we are trying to develop a better system to recognize potential lesions. Uh, so, you know, we don't miss important lesions, but right now the procedures, it's very, very operator dependent. So finding a good gastroenterologist with a lot of experience is very important as well. <clears throat> so that's the important message that I want to give you. And let me put this information into a context. As I've explained in my book, The Path of Longevity, basically uh, uh, the prevention of many of the common chronic disease, including colon cancer, or we say especially colon cancer, is the result of a number of healthy lifestyles and uh, screening medical uh, regimen, okay? So there is no doubt, and I clearly explained that nutrition, exercise, play a major, major role in the prevention of colon cancer for several reasons. I don't have the time into, to go into details, but you know, having excess uh, visceral fat uh, promotes insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, and, uh, and uh, inflammation, and many other alterations that are increasing the risk of uh, uh, colon cancer uh, then the quality of diet, as I explained, you know, fiber content, animal protein, iron of the animal of the of the of the animal foods, and uh, and other uh, compounds like in uh, processed meat, you know, the nitrates and uh, and uh, the phytochemicals, the high glycemic index, they're all important factors in shaping the gut microbiota and the metabolic hormonal health. And uh, that is changing the biology of the epithelial cells and the risk of developing colon cancer. So there is no doubt that what we are doing is strongly shaping the risk of developing colon cancer and many other cancer and chronic diseases through multiple mechanisms that I've tried to dissect in my scientific journal papers published in many important journals and for lay people in this book. Now, said that, even if you know you have the best healthy lifestyle uh, uh, or you are trying to improve your lifestyle, I think you know it's very important that you you undergo regular screening for several um, diseases. In uh, chapter seven of this book, The Path of Longevity, uh, I've outlined you know, the preventative uh, uh, actions. Uh, and uh, on page 200, I have listed a number of screening that uh, people should consider doing after they talk with their general practitioner. So again, find a good general practitioner and discuss with him or her your health and what type of screening at what age you should perform to minimize your risk of developing and dying of some of the most important chronic diseases. As I said, this study clearly shows that in people who are undergoing colonoscopy, basically there is a 31% reduction in colorectal cancer and a 50% reduction decline in colon cancer mortality. Therefore, as I explained in the book, the guidelines, the current guidelines, <clears throat> 
clearly show that color, color, colorectal cancer screening is an important tool to reduce the incidence of cancer death, for colon cancer death, and it does not just apply to at-risk people, but also in low-risk asymptomatic people, uh, there is a benefit for being tested. From being tested. Now, as I outline here, what we know is that uh, if you are older than 45, uh, you should undergo a colonoscopy. At the baseline, so when you're 45, and then every 10 years. Or annual fecal occult blood tests or CT colonography every five years. So there are different options that you should discuss with your GP and then with your gastroenterologist based on your particular risk. There are data showing that in US and other uh, Western countries, the uh, incidence of colorectal cancer <clears throat> is growing, especially in people younger than 45. We don't know why, probably the change in lifestyle, the epidemic of obesity and other risk factors are probably responsible for this increase in young onset colon cancer. And so again, discuss with your GP if based on your family history or other risk factors, you may be eligible for a colonoscopy before the age of 45. So as always, I hope you know that I can uh, provide some important uh, and useful information for you that is not a medical recommendation. All my videos are not performing, they're not mm, basically uh, uh, giving a medical recommendation. They are just, you know, information based on scientific evidence that must, must be personalized and discussed. And so you should always discuss with your general practitioner, find a good general practitioner that can follow you and advise you on what is the best uh, uh, lifestyle and screening and uh, and medical uh, preventative and therapeutic uh, protocols that are right for you for your health based on your genetic and family history and medical and lifestyle history. Thank you for listening as always.